Someone asks regarding very interested in understanding the technical aspects of building and using the batteries and surveying local needs. We have a hurricane hitting Florida tomorrow morning, and it came out that one of the community members who has an electric wheelchair will be stuck if they are without power. A situation where there is an emergency upon us or a potential emergency upon us. And so actually, I'll, I'll put it out there to the group. Imagine this is the community. There's a hurricane about to hit Florida. There's an individual who has a wheelchair. What are some antidotes? Does anyone want to chime in on that? I'll qualify it too, based off of the information that you've learned here. <laughs> or your daily reckoning, there, Eugene. There is a... <clears throat> I presume that a wheelchair you, uh, runs with a DC, a low voltage DC motor. So it doesn't need an inverter, probably, or maybe it does to control the speed. I don't know. But one option is to just provide the battery itself without any other equipment if the wheelchair batteries are similar to what we might be using. Some wheelchairs might have six volt batteries, so then <laughs> you don't want to give them a 12 volt battery. Yeah, and just as a general rule of thumb, so everyone's thinking on the same wavelength, like any motor that's disconnected from the grid is going to be a DC motor. So if it's a wheelchair, you can drive it around. You don't have to be plugged in. That's a DC motor. The, the little uh, scooters that we talked about before, those are DC motors, which means they all run on DC batteries, which the type of batteries that we're all, we've been talking about this entire time are, are direct current DC batteries. So they'll all have those type of batteries in there. All right, I was trying to write this out in the theme, but just to honor, again, first and foremost, checking in with folks of what type of solidarity they do and do not want. Because if each one of us was in the same logistical situation, it would be very different. So some folk might want to go to the central community hub that has a much larger solar battery. Some folk might want and need to stay in their physical home for many different reasons. Some folk, like even what I'm naming as the core critical crisis need is gonna be different for each of us. And so I would just like, absolutely, yes, we need to dream and scheme of the logistics. And just if we can always, speaking from whether it's hurricanes, and I know that everyone survives these things, that they manifest in different ways in each of our communities, but just knowing that the savior piece from outside folk, of, I know what your problem is, I know what the solution is, do it my way or shame on you, that's thick. And so, Yes, the exercise is where we keep dreaming and scheming different logistics pieces, but just to check to first and foremost that we always, the solutions led by and directly accountable to folks most impacted, that there's not one right way and that what is my medicine might be the opposite of what's your medicine. And so how we are accountable in our solidarity and our mutual aid and explicitly naming those contradictions from junk so we don't get into some like spazier patronizing its own level of harm. Yeah. Love and I was just thinking not to escape the obvious. I know that we have batteries and everything, but and sometimes eventually they run out or whatever. So see if we can go to a family member or a friend house or push come to shove evacuate I know some people may not want to do that but there's shelters that's equipped for special care um in and in, in case if he's on the seventh floor and whatever power that he has runs out what is he going to do after that so it's a lot of thinking look involved it's just a thought. The battery is in the people power. Yeah, we can't stress that enough. So did we come up with a solution? One thing I was just hearing there, which I think is a really good point, is the idea that there's already oftentimes existing assets within our communities. So there's the, what do we need to create and what do we already have? And for a situation right now where maybe the container for this battery collective hasn't been created yet, then it's the, what are those available resources? Is there community shelters already? Are there some sort of resilience centers that can complement 
the work that is being done. So you can layer on, and which was said by a number of people, like we already have a collective, we're already working on stuff. We can figure out how we bring this in and make this an, an additional part of the work that we do. So looking at that complementarity can be a really powerful thing. And also it can be when there's an, a, an acute emergency and time's of the essence, it's nice to be able to reach out to those available resources. So doing some of that mapping work earlier rather than in the last minute moment can be super impactful. Thank you for that, Tom. Yeah, I think being prepared is probably going to be the number one solution for a lot of things. Anyone else want to chime in on the, we have a person who needs a wheelchair in the community. This is a real life situation here and now. Hurricane's supposed to hit tomorrow morning. This is Martha. Um, I just, I kind of have to disagree with um, the whole idea of power mapping, uh, making sure that you have all the resources connected. In Planada, when we had the big floods and people were scrambling at four o'clock in the morning in the dark, trying to figure out what to do. There were a lot of people that were just not, they weren't panicking. They were starting to make telephone pulls and making calls for folks that they could call outside of our area and say, hey, we need this, we need that. And it really resonated with me, the fact that they didn't have anything formal, but they knew where those resources would lie. Where could they call? in case something happened. On a greater scale for Merced County, I'm concerned because we have an emergency preparedness uh, program, so to speak, but it's in paper, it's in theory, it's not act an actual place, it's not tangible, it's not really manifested in the community where people can say, I can go there or I can acquiesce this or that, I can get training on this or that. So for myself, I love the idea of the battery. That battery is so important, but how to bring that narrative into a perspective where it's real, where it's like the center of focus of the conversation, because you have to have support from governance in a lot of situations because we were relying for emergency services and things like that. So you do need some type of conduit to that. But in my situation, I think it's going to be the community is going to have to be the emergency service and the, we're going to have to create the plan of attack and how to do what, because they're not going to do it for us. And they have not, even with the, these situations that have happened, getting together with the people that matter and that have all the, the supplies is very important. Thank you, Martha. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways, battery, you can say the battery is the physical battery Battery ultimately is just this thing that stores energy and energy can be in a form of electricity. Energy can be in a form of many different forms, including peanut has lots of energy and you eat peanut, you get a lot more energy than if you were to eat, say, a leaf of lettuce, even though it's bigger than a peanut. And so in what we're trying to do is about how do we connect things that stores a lot of energy to each other. So then we create that network with each other. And so when we see the physical battery, how do we make sure this is linked to each other? When we see each of us, how do we make sure we are connected? For anyone who's thinking about anyone who needs wheelchair access tomorrow, maybe it would be good to make sure a connection is made. It's like calling on them and having a good sense of how to check in with them. It's ultimately about how we are all connected with each other. I agree because I envision like this the thing like fire right like in the cave dwelling days when they discovered fire right and fire meant so many different things but it was also a catalyst that brought people together to like harness fire and so the battery it's an animate object yet it represents so much in the community and so its relevance has to be created by the synergy that we put out and how we represent that battery. So for myself, it's like really trying to look at PSAs, working with other organizations and letting people know that there is going to be a battery in the community. And it's not my battery, it's the community's battery. So what would you like to do with it? And would you want another battery? And what does it symbolize? Just kind of like having those early conversations of how it symbolically is, a unifier for the community 
is really important too. Not just because I know that eventually, of course, it's energy. We're going to use it. We're going to share it. We're going to create a collective. But I just think of it as here it is. And what would you like to say about it? Thank you. I think Sun's hand was up. Just in general, I'm realizing that in some of the scenarios I'm coming up with, I was like, even without a crisis, like a power outage or something, that there are things about people in my community that I'm not knowledgeable, I haven't taken the time to learn. Even in organizing, it can be easy just to be excited that there's something happening and then not considering who is not even able to access what we're sharing and developing right now. And that can feel like we're slowing down to consider and to plan and to think about the ways that even what we're doing in the moment isn't accessible to everyone and the most precarious people in our community, but also the plans that we've come up with and the strategies or even the scenarios that come up that we think we need to be prepared for. Uh, so I was saying I wasn't saying the person who brought the question up was necessarily doing that, but I was realizing that I haven't even thought to consider what kind of batteries in a wheelchair and what that needs might be and how many volts it might be. Um, but someone who has a wheelchair needs to consider that every day or every time like there's they need to transport themselves. So I think that was just a reminder uh, that we don't want to be trying to figure this out when the stakes feel even higher than they are. Thank you. I think it's one of the testaments to like three weeks ago when we we're uh, explaining on how to size the battery and looking at your um, appliances and things that you'll be charging with the battery. Hopefully on someone's list was in our community, we have a wheelchair. So that's one of the items that we're going to size this battery for. So we have a battery and we know that if you plug the wheelchair into it, it can recharge once or twice or three times, or this will get you five hours of use. But all those calculations can be to everyone's uh, point done ahead of time when you know what to expect in the event of an emergency. I just want to name out, I was writing out a bunch of different things that uh, both blood family and chosen family have had to do to survive in situations like this and not just the obvious things from hurricanes but again that looks many different ways on the quiet times when no one's looking and just like flashbacks coming up and all these things so just wanting to honor both how we're talking about these things how we're sharing these things honoring that those of us in this circle have lived through different variations on these themes have loved ones who've lived through variations on these themes and so even when we're sharing out, like I'll share out some of the stuff I was, came off the top of the head and also knowing that that's raw. So also sending like love and tenderness to folks when we're talking about it, when we're writing things in chat that are life and death, that also have, some of us have dear ones who have been left behind in these situations. So just come in with that tenderness. We got to talk about the logistics that's critical and just send in some fierce love through this conversation before, during, after. Also like, what can we do to love on ourselves and the people that we love after we get off this circle? Because we hold this long time. Thank you, Anne. Kelvin. Yeah, I agree with Anne. And I think it's important. Oftentimes people in uh, religious organizations talk about looking better than your story. And that's one reason why I brought up the fact that we should really coordinate not only with our community, but also with community first responders, because oftentimes we don't know what their agenda really is. And in this group, I've heard people say that they don't care or they don't know, they don't have an empathy for the situations of the individuals who they serve. And my background is working with the United States Marine Corps. I have survived blackouts in New York and earthquakes in Los Angeles. And I think it's really key to have conversations so that if there's a person in the wheelchair and there are certain first responder resources in the community, then that person, if they choose to, will be out of their house, hopefully in a environment where they can be taken care of that they accept to take care from, and they won't have to worry about it. But that's a decision they have to make. And if it's it's a trusted location and a trusted source, they might make it. So it's a two-sided coin and pre-thinking, pre-conversing, and having early conversations. And like Anne said, being respective of where people approach this from. But this is complex because it involves a lot of moving parts and a lot of uncertainty. And a lot of times people don't know what 
could happen or could not happen based on the ferocity of an event that is being reported in time. Thanks. Thank you, Kelvin. You said a lot there, so I just want to take a, a couple of little nuggets. So one of the things is that just for everyone's understanding, and one of the things that helps find solutions is to focus on finding solutions. Um, a lot of times when you focus on the problem or what led to the problem, it prevents us from actually finding the solution, regardless of what else is going on. Like the bottom line is the person needs whatever the person needs. And sometimes if you repeat to yourself what the problem is, it helps the solution come up a lot more clear, especially in the event of an emergency. I've heard multiple times, and I think we've had conversations in the past just about this mentality that someone's going to come help us, like in the event of emergency, oh, we'll wait for such and such. Or the, the way bureaucracy is set up, the way like the government is set up, the government is set up to govern, which means in order to govern, you have to have a sense of order. During an emergency, that sense of order is disrupted. There's not a sense of order. That is not the place for the government. So when people stand around and wait for organizations that are also in disorder, because those Organizations are still run by individuals. Those individuals are still subjected to the same catastrophe that's happening to you. So just the thought or the concept that, oh, the fire truck's coming. The fire tr people have families, believe it or not. And the way that they're taught and the way that they're instructed is first to take care of your family and then report it and start helping other people. So that may be a day, that may be three days, that may be who knows. So. The times where government is not supposed to work, it, it doesn't work. The time when government's supposed to work, sometimes it doesn't work either. So just make sure you guys have an open mind and a realistic mind when it comes to uh, solutions and so forth. There was a couple of comments. I saw a couple of good solutions that both came in at the same time, one from Anita and one from Anne regarding uh, a manual wheelchair. So problem is person has an electrical wheelchair. Is it possible to get them a manual wheelchair so that they would have that as a, a plan B or a backup plan, which uh, I really appreciated that solution. I thought it was very simplistic, right? Just repeating yourself back to the problem. And then what do you come up with when you actually look at the problem? Oh, the wheelchair is electric. Are we trying to solve for the fact that we need electricity? Or are we trying to solve for having the person be mobile so they can get to an exit or get to a vehicle so they can be transported? what's the actual problem and, and being able to look at that. I, I thought that was a very witty solution. And another option is, especially since it's, I wouldn't say last minute, but it's a situation where people don't have their battery collective set up right now. And this is a thing that's in your community. You can always go buy a battery, a hardware store, you can go get a generator. And after it passes, you can take it back to the store. So, and they'll take it back, usually no questions asked. So it can be something that's on standby or something that can be charged now before the hurricane hits tomorrow, if that's the situation where you can have that tool there ready for the person. And also good for the rest of us to really think about like, when this happens to us, what do we need to start thinking ahead? Inspire some ideas. Um, around disability justice inspired a lot of different thinking for each of us, for us to bring whatever we have to the table and we can take whatever works for us.